Hi guys, welcome to Fritoex. Uh, this is the second part of the Nikon D3100 uh, basics operation videos. In this video I'm going to go through the uh, semi-automatic modes. In the last video I briefly went through the different uh, auto modes for you. So in this one I'm just going to go through uh, briefly how and when and why you would use the uh, M, A, S and P modes which are the kind of modes that you progress towards as you get more into your photography. Ok I'm going to start off with uh, A mode so uh, on your uh, mode dial here switch it into the A um, if you're watching this and don't have this particular camera or different brand of camera this might be labelled AV uh, but it's the same thing it's called aperture priority what that means is that in the camera you select what aperture you want the camera to use and then the camera selects the appropriate shutter speed to get a good overall exposure. So on my D3 1000 here, turn the camera on and you can see on the info screen here as I spoke about in the first video you have your shutter speed and your aperture listed. Now this lens I have mounted is actually an f1.4 so you can see it says f1.4 uh, on the screen there. So um, to change aperture on this camera you simply use this rear dial here and you'll hear that it's notched and you'll feel that it's notched when you use it and each one of those notches is changing the aperture now if you look closely at the uh, picture and as I mentioned in the previous video this little picture they have on the camera here as I change the aperture you can see that hole is getting smaller. Um, it's not a real representation of how small the hole actually is. It's just a guide to show you what is actually happening as you change that number. And remember that the lower the number, the bigger the hole is, the more light that comes in. The more light that comes in, the faster your shutter speed can be. So if you look as I'm changing the aperture, you'll see that the shutter speed here is also changing and that's the camera that's doing that the camera is measuring the amount of light coming in for each aperture I select and then it chooses the appropriate shutter speed and you can see this lens goes up to f22 and that's giving me an exposure of 4 or 5 seconds now you'd use this mode um, when you want to control the depth of field that the camera is going to give you um, I actually use this mode probably 80% of the time that I'm shooting. You may hear some professional photographers or other people say that you shouldn't be using these modes, you should always use manual. But that's rubbish. Um, they put these modes on the camera for a reason. Those modes are on even the most expensive cameras you can buy. They're there to help you and they're there to make life easier for you. There's no point having all this technology if you're not going to use it and you're just going to stick in manual all the time. Of course I use manual as well when I need to, but a lot of the time Aperture Priority does everything I need it to do. Um, when I'm f uh, photographing things I like to control the, the depth of field in the image that I have. If I'm shooting portraits um, I like to have sort of an aperture of about f2.8 to about f4. So I get the majority of the face in focus, um, but the, black, uh, the background blurs out nicely. If I'm shooting landscapes, I put the aperture up to maybe f11, up to maybe f22, depending on the scene. So aperture priority is a really good um, all-purpose sort of all mode when you know what the photograph you're taking wants to look like. Okay, so that's aperture priority. The next one we'll look at is the S mode, which is shutter priority. Now this is basically exactly the same as aperture priority, except in this mode you're controlling the shutter speed and the camera is choosing the aperture for you. If you look at the screen again now, it's telling me I've got a shutter speed of one two thousandths of a second, but here it says low and at the top it says the subject is too dark. Now the reason that is, is because my shutter speed is so fast it's not letting enough light in to get a good exposure and you'll see now as I slow down the shutter speed it goes from 1 100th to 
No, F1 100th is low, and as I go to 180th, it's giving me a shutter speed of f1.4 to 1.6. Obviously, my lens is pointing at the desk at the moment, so it's not a very good representation of uh, what the camera will actually do. But to show you, again, with the same rear dial that I was using before, um, I can change the shutter speed, and the camera will change the aperture to what it thinks is best. Now this mode I don't use all that often um, because I don't really shoot a lot of things where speed is an issue and the sort of times you'd use shutter priority is when shooting sports or shooting people when you want a really fast shutter speed to freeze the action. Um, other times you might use it it's when you want to slow down action, um, so you want uh, blurry water or a photograph I took the other day was of a fairground at night. Um, it was a steam fair with all the lights on it and uh, the carousel was spinning around and I wanted to show movement in that carousel. So I used S mode and I put a shutter speed of about 3 seconds on and uh, took the photo then. So Shutter, uh, shutter priority is when you want to control the speed of movement in your image so if you want something to be frozen so it's really sharp or if you want to blur something purposely okay the next one we have here is P which is program auto I've spoke briefly about this in the last video now this mode is a kind of semi-automatic mode you don't have control over any of these uh, two settings but what happens is it's giving you a preset range like a sort of um, an ideal kind of scenario if you like and you can select different um, different presets but you don't have control over the individual um, elements I must admit I pretty much never used this mode before um, but it's a good sort of starter mode I suppose um, you'll always get a good picture with this because the camera is always getting the correct exposure um, by combining these two elements the next mode that we'll look at is M which is fully manual now a lot of people hear the words manual and think oh god what do I do um, I'm not going to be able to do this it's actually a lot simpler than it sounds and especially with modern day DSLRs um, they've made it so easy um, to still get good photos even in manual mode if I turn the info screen on here you'll see on the screen you've got these um, dots on the bottom this bar and those bars represent stops as you can see you have uh, a zero then you have two dots and then a dash and then two dots and a dash the dashes represent full stops of light and the dots represent one third stops of light. When there's no bars either side, so I can just get that back for you, that is the good exposure. Now you use this uh, rear dial to control the shutter speed in manual mode and on the basic DSLRs there's no front dial like there is on the um, kind of better pro models so to control the aperture you use this button here which has got the picture of uh, a plus and a minus but it's also got a picture of looks like a wheel with um, loads of lines in it that denotes the aperture so to change the aperture you press that button down and then you rotate the rear dial again and as you can see there that the aperture changes now you'll see with manual mode and um, this several different ways of getting a good exposure so that the dashes are on the naught. You can either change your aperture or you can change your shutter speed. So say I was taking a picture of a portrait and like I said earlier I like to use probably um, f2.8 and then simply by moving the shutter speed just using the dial I can get a good exposure denoted by 
the dash is there on normal. You see it's flicking around a bit because um, again I'm not pointing at a, a certain thing here, so it is changing slightly. But it's about one fiftieth of a second it's given me, and that will give me a good exposure. Say now I wanted to take a picture of a landscape, so I'd change the aperture by pressing in that button and rotating the dial to say f11 and now you see that the lines have gone all the way down to this minus which means that the image is going to be underexposed so I need to slow my shutter speed to compensate for that aperture until it goes back onto the naught. You see if I go too far it comes up into this plus section which means it's going to be overexposed when it's on that dash line now that's going to be one whole stop overexposed which will blow out all the highlights of your image. So by using these um, two things together, the aperture and the shutter speed you've got full con creative control over your picture um, if you want a slow shutter speed you just dial it in and then adjust the aperture to suit or if you know that you want a really shallow depth of field say f1.4 then I can bring the shutter speed right down to compensate for that. So although manual mode sounds pretty scary, with this info screen which is also replicated in the viewfinder it's really easy to get a really good exposure um, without really knowing too much about the uh, really in-depth things of photography. What I recommend you do is just try putting it in manual mode and then just go out into your garden or when you're out on a walk and just try shooting um, different things, just try messing with the controls, try changing the aperture, changing the shutter speed and just remember that when you're shooting to keep an eye on this bar down here and to get that on the naught so there's no different uh, dashes or bars either side. As you get more into your photography you'll start to actually want to add sometimes different things um, you might want to underexpose the image slightly or you might want to overexpose slightly and um, that's going to be in a more advanced video um, for now for you just make sure to try and keep it on the zero and that will give you a good all round exposure ok that's it for this video um, I hope that was helpful for you just to get you into uh, using the more manual modes and the semi-automatic modes it's always a good idea to get out of auto modes just gives you that bit more control and it helps teach you uh, the fundamentals of photography about balancing the aperture and the shutter speed. Um, in the next video I will probably talk to you about ISO, uh, white balance and uh, some of the other different settings on the camera. Um, but for now that will do for this video. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much.